the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard how yudhishthira was lured into the game of dice and how shakuni defeated him to win all his possessions including his brothers and his wife draupadi as the slaves of duryodhana shakuni raised his hand and rolled the pieces in his palms the pieces rattled as shakuni shook them in his hand and then with a loud crash they landed on the board and rolled off to the edge before stopping shakuni yelled i win 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 duryodhana called vidura and said uncle go and fetch draupadi to the court she doesn't belong to the royal chambers anymore let her get busy working with the maids to clean the floor his brothers broke into rapturous laughter vidura said only an evil man like you could utter this disgusting words Draupadi cannot be your maid because Yudhishthira lost his rights as a husband when he placed her as his bet. Duryodhana, let me warn you once again. Stop this and return everything to Yudhishthira, else death won't be far for you or your brothers. Duryodhana ignored Vidura. He turned towards one of his attendants and said, "Pratikami." Go to the palace and bring Draupadi to the court. Tell her that her lord Duryodhana is calling her. Pratikami stood up and bowed to Prince Duryodhana, and then he left the hall to fetch Draupadi. Pratikami, Duryodhana's attendant, entered the inner quarters of the palace. He walked up to Draupadi's room and knocked on the door. Draupadi was preparing for her bath. She wore a long piece of white silk that draped loosely around her body. A maid massaged her arms and legs with aromatic oils. She gestured the maid to stop and asked, "Who's this?" "It's me, Pratikami, son of the royal charioteer. May I come in?" "Come in," said Draupadi. Pratikami entered the room with his eyes to the ground. but the intoxicating lotus fragrance from draupadi made her presence quite conspicuous she asked what do you want pratikami o queen king yudhishthira bet his brothers and himself in the game of dice and lost to duryodhana he also bet you and lost you duryodhana now owns you and has ordered me to bring you to the assembly hall please come with me pratikami's voice trembled as he uttered these words draupadi couldn't believe her ears she felt as if the ground was shaking under her feet she could feel a surge of anger run through her veins and, and tried hard to control herself she looked at pratikami and said pratikami go back to the hall and ask yudhishthira whom did he lose first me or him Pratikami went back to the assembly hall and asked Yudhishthira the question. Yudhishthira didn't answer and sat still like a dead man. Duryodhana said, "Go back and tell Draupadi she must come here and ask her question." Pratikami went back to Draupadi and passed on the message. Draupadi said, "Ask the wise and learned seniors in the court what should I do? I'll do whatever they suggest." Pratikami asked but the seniors kept silent with their eyes to the floor Duryodhana was getting impatient he yelled at Pratikami do as i say bring draupadi to the assembly floor Pratikami was scared he said in a feeble voice but but prince duryodhana what should i tell her Duryodhana looked at the sarshana and said brother 
This fool is scared to bring Draupadi because he is afraid of Bhima. You go and bring her to the hall and if she doesn't obey my orders, then don't hesitate to use force. Dusashana stomped to the halls and entered Draupadi's chambers. He stood at the door with his arms on his hips and roared, Draupadi, your husband has lost you in gambling. You are now our slave and you must obey our orders. Shed off your pride and come with me to the court. Your lord awaits you. Scared, Draupadi tried to flee. She ran towards the adjoining room where the other Kaurava ladies lived. But Dusashana jumped in front of her and grabbed her by her hair. How dare you try to escape me? Come with me, you slave! Dusashana yanked Draupadi by her hair and dragged her out of the door. Draupadi screamed in pain. Let me go! Let me go! You hurtless brute! I am not in a proper attire to appear in the court! Let me go, I say! Let me go! Dusashana laughed and said, ha! I don't care if you're dressed or undressed. You are our slave and your duty is to please us. Come with me. <laughs> the Shasana dragged Draupadi to the assembly hall in her disheveled clothes and threw her down to the floor. Uh. Draupadi tried her best to cover her body and as she stood up in front of the assembled king's men. By now... Her shame and humiliation has transformed into pure rage. With a staccato voice, she said, Dusashana, you will pay for this with your life. Even if the gods want to protect you, the Pandavas would never spare you. She looked at the seated Kuru seniors and said, I have been humiliated and dragged down in front of you, the great heroes of the Kuru dynasty. But why don't I hear a single voice of protest? What happened to the great Bhishma, Drona, Vidura? What happened to the great King Dhritarashtra? Are you all dead? Are you blind? Can't you see how morality and decency are being destroyed in this family? How could you sit still and enjoy this inhuman behavior of your own descendants? Is this what you have learned in your scriptures? Dusashana pushed her down to the floor and jeered, <laughs> Stop squealing, you slave! <laughs> <laughs> Karna joined the laughter and so did Shakuni. But Draupadi's humiliation was not enjoyed by all in the audience. Many hid their tears but couldn't say anything. They were either too afraid to protest didn't have any solid logic to support her helplessness. After all, she was lost in the game by her own husband. Bhishma coughed a little to clear his voice and then said, <clears throat> My dear Draupadi, the laws of morality are complex and subtle. I am afraid I won't be able to give you the right answer to your question. Yudhishthira who has always followed the path of truth, has himself accepted his defeat. It was Shakuni's skill that motivated Yudhishthira to accept his challenge and play the game. And I see no reason to believe that Shakuni used any unfair means to defeat him. That's not true, said Draupadi. Yudhishthira didn't want to play with Shakuni. He was asked to play the game against his will. Yudhishthira is pure-hearted. And Kurun grasped Duryodhana's conspiracy and Shakuni's deceptive tricks. That's why he was defeated. But you, the wise Kuru seniors, use your judgment and tell me if I was won by Duryodhana or not. Bhima was seething in anger. Till now he had controlled himself because of Yudhishthira. But Draupadi's humiliation broke his restraint. He jumped up from his seat and in a thunderous voice he yelled at Yudhishthira. Even the worst of gamblers won't bet his concubine, let alone his wife. At least they have some humanity and kindness in them, but you don't. Our enemies stole our kingdom and our wealth by trickery and deceit. 
that didn't anger me since you were the owner of all but draupadi is the wife of the mighty pandavas she shouldn't have to suffer this insult and misery this cruel and low life kauravas had the audacity to torture her only because of you i will set to flames those hands of yours which played the evil game of dice sahadeva fetch me some fire bhima's anger scared everybody in the hall arjuna stood up to calm him down brother bhima please control yourself yudhishthira is our elder brother it is our duty to follow him and support him in whatever he does and you know very well yudhishthira would never do anything immoral trust me we will have our chance to get back at them later arjuna pulled bhima back to his seat just then vikarna one of duryodhana's 99 brothers stood up to say something he was panting with excitement and was continuously rubbing his hands vikarna said since nobody wants to answer draupadi's legitimate question let me say what i feel is right and justified hunting drinking gambling and womanizing are the four worst addictions of a king a man who suffers from these vices fall from the path of righteousness and virtue and a man's action under the influence of his addiction can never be considered to be valid or justified yudhishthira was addicted to gambling and he bet draupadi under the influence hence his actions cannot be valid besides yudhishthira better after losing himself hence draupadi could not have been lost in the game she is free vikarna's comments raised a major storm in the hall many agreed to his logic and praised him while criticizing shakuni and duryodhana enraged by vikarna's disloyalty karna yelled at him vikarna stop babbling like a moron you are a child and you don't know the first thing about morality and virtue the seniors are not commenting because they have a justified reason to do so yudhishthira had lost draupadi when he bet all his possessions which included draupadi still with a clear and unambiguous voice he gambled her again none of the pandava brothers raised their voice in protest and with their silence they too gave their consent so what are you complaining about also listen as per the vedas a woman can only have one husband draupadi has many hence she is nothing more than a prostitute and now stop lamenting for her and show your support for your brother duryodhana shakuni has won the pandavas along with all their belongings including draupadi they are now nothing more than slaves the sashana go and take off the clothes from the pandavas and draupadi let's see how our slaves look naked the pandava brothers took off the scarves that covered their upper body while draupadi stood clenching her silk robe that covered her the sashana walked up to her and grabbed one end of her robe draupadi helplessly looked at her husband hoping they would rise from their stupor and do something but they sat still with their head hung low the rowdy laughter of dushashana and the crowd of her brothers didn't reach their ears dushashana pulled one end of draupadi's robe and she spun around exposing large portions of her skin with folded palms she cried out o oh lord vishnu o oh lord krishna save me from this insult protect me from this unbearable humiliation please save me but her cries didn't stop the sashana he pulled draupadi's robe again and again but this time she did not spin around the sashana kept pulling her robe but the fabric seemed to expand in a continuous stream without exposing a single inch of draupadi's body the sashana kept on pulling and the fabric kept on flowing soon the assembly floor filled up with piles of silk drawn by the sashana the audience was amazed to witness this miracle they all raised up on their feet and hailed draupadi and rebuked the sashana exhausted the sashana finally gave up 
and sat down to take his breath. Bhima was grinding his teeth in frustration and rage. He couldn't keep quiet any longer. He yelled, Listen all who are present here today. If one day in the battlefield I don't tear open the chest of this scoundrel, the Sarshan, and drink his blood, then I won't attain the abode of my ancestors. This I promise. Hearing Bhima's terrible oath, the Kaura was shuddered in fear. The kings and royalties in the audience cursed the Sashana for his obscene behavior. Vidura said, Dear assemblymen, why are you not responding to poor Draupadi's questions? Say something. Vikarna has spoken from his hurt. You should too. The men in the assembly didn't respond. Karna said, The Sashana, take your slave Draupadi to her quarters. The Sashana got up on his feet and once again grabbed Draupadi's hair and yanked her. Ah! Let me go! Let me go! Didn't you hear what Bhima said? The Sashana laughed and dragged her to the floor. Draupadi looked at the Kuru seniors and said, How could you sit still and watch your daughter treated with such cruelty? Are the glory days of the Kuru dynasty over? What evil spirit has clouded your judgment? Tell me, tell me, am I a slave? Am I a slave or not? Answer me! Bhishma, with tearful eyes, said, I told you, my dear, justice and morality are too complicated to decipher. Hence, I cannot answer your question with certainty. But one thing I can say for sure, the Kauravas have succumbed to greed and malice, and their days are numbered. No one can stop their destruction. But for your question, I think only Yudhishthira can give you the right answer. Duryodhana laughed at Draupadi and said, <laughs> All right, all right. Let Bhima, Arjuna and the other brothers proclaim that Yudhishthira is not your husband. Let them say that Yudhishthira is a liar and I will give you freedom. Or let the son of Dharma himself say if he is your husband or not. Maybe that will clarify your doubts. Huh? <laughs> Bhima stood up and raised his powerful arms. If Yudhishthira, our guru and leader, didn't restrain me, I would have never tolerated your insolent behavior yelled at Duryodhana. If he permits, I can kill you all with a single blow of my fist. But Yudhishthira did not bat an eyelid. He sat there in a dumb stupor, as if he had no consciousness. Duryodhana looked at him and said, Your brothers are waiting for your command. Huh? Why don't you say something? Why don't you answer your beloved Draupadi? Eh? <laughs> Karna walked up to Draupadi and said, Pretty slave, it seems Yudhishthira has no interest in you. I say, forget him. Find a new husband or husbands for yourself. You will find many men in the slave quarters. The Kauravas broke into a huge laughter at Karna's mockery. <laughs> Duryodhana uncovered his thigh and with a vulgar gesture he slapped on it and winked at Draupadi. Draupadi closed her eyes in disgust. Bhima roared in anger. Bursting with rage he said to Duryodhana, You scoundrel! How dare you show such disrespect to Draupadi! One day, if I don't break that thigh of yours with a blow of my mace, then let the doors of heaven be forever closed for me. Bhima's open threat ran shivers down the spines of the men assembled. Vidura said to the Kauravas, You sons of Dhritarashtra, beware of Bhimsena. He can cause immense pain to you all. Great danger awaits you that you cannot even think of. You have disregarded the rules of the game of dice. You have crossed all boundaries of decency by dragging in your family's woman to, into the court and violating her dignity in the worst possible way. 
this court had lost all its credibility. For here, justice and morality has been corrupted. Just then, its jackal cried out from near the fire temple of Tetarashtra. Donkeys brayed and vultures screamed in the sky. Hearing these horrible ominous sounds, Gandhari, Drona and other Brahmins got scared. They warned Dhritarashtra that something terrible would happen soon unless he stopped the Kauravas from going too far. As if waking up from a deep slumber, Dhritarashtra cried out, You fool Duryodhana! You have insulted Draupadi, the wife of my beloved nephews, the Pandavas. Death awaits you for your unpardonable sin. Then he turned to Draupadi and said, Panchali, you are the best amongst my daughter-in-laws. You are the most faithful and virtuous woman in our family. Ask anything you want from me. Draupadi sat down in front of Dhritarashtra's feet and said, O king, if you'd like to grant me a wish, then please release Yudhishthira from his slavery. Let no one call my son Pratibindya the son of a slave. Dhritarashtra raised his hand and said, I grant your wish. Yudhishthira is free. What else do you wish for? Draupadi said, Then, then release Bhima. Arjuna, Nakula and Sahadeva from their slavery? Dhritarashtra said, So be it. They are all free now. But two wishes are not enough for you. Tell me, tell me, what more do you want? Draupadi said, Thank you, O king. But I don't want anything more. My husbands are free. They can reconstruct their life by their own deeds. Karna was surprised at Draupadi's magnanimous gesture. He said, I have never heard of any woman do what Draupadi did just now. She has rescued the Pandavas just as a boat rescues a drowning man. Bhima came to Yudhishthira and said, Allow me, brother. Let me crush these evil Kaurava brothers right now. Yudhishthira stopped him. He said, Bhima, please stay calm. This is not the time. He then came in front of Dhritarashtra, knelt before him and said, O king, we are always at your service. Tell me, what should we do now? Dhritarashtra said, My dear Yudhishthira, I give you back your kingdom, your wealth and all your possessions. Go back to Indraprastha and rule as you have ruled before. Forget this evil day and do not keep any grudge against Duryodhana. I had agreed to this game only to see you and watch you play once again with your brothers. I, I never thought it would turn out to be so ugly. But you have retained your calm and acted well following the path of truth and righteousness. With you as the king, and Vidura as the minister, the Kuru dynasty has nothing to worry about. Remember, you and your brothers are always in our minds and we always wish you well. Go back to Indraprastha and live in peace with your brothers forever. The stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bonik. Audio engineering, original music, and sound design by Avi Ziv. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any podcast catcher. Podcast.